waist on a crutch, man. Windows is back to its old dirty tricks. I just, I don't know what it was. Maybe my spidey sense was tingling, but um, I was like, check the volume for your microphone. It was down to 11. As if I would ever, like who the hell sets uh, your microphone? <laughs> like, give me a, oh, good God. Anyway, let's start. Yeah, it's been interesting to um, spend a lot of time staring at it properly for the flipping, uh, you know, for me anyways, to look at it from the Russian side. I've been saying so long I stare at it from the other I do though my note taking on that side is just easier all right I've been going back and forth up down all around trying to uh, distribute the forces for the Russians we've got 10 armies I think I've mentioned that before and we've got several priorities Why am I going back and forth? Look, it's going to be, this is going to be pseudo playthrough, pseudo ramble, whatever. I'm just doing what I'm doing. I'm going to probably have to go and change the music every once in a while and so on and so forth. I'm going with my gut on this and it's going to be focus on what my priorities are ignore the background chatter because I want to do everything. I want to have my cake and eat it to uh, BS syndrome in the sense that I would like to have, oh, like a maximum, you know, uh, amount of forces throughout my front. It ain't going to happen. I can't do that. Uh, I would love it. It's not going to happen. I've got to realize that Unexpected things are going to happen. I've got to prepare for that. And I also have to realize the other side has to deal with that as well. So I do not want to be reactive. I want to be proactive. And I know I've got a lot of Russian command and control dysfunction some ways and other ways not due to the fact that I've decentralized uh, the entire front into three sectors. Yes, I understand that Yuri Danilov over there has got overall control and he's been directed by the Tsar to, um, you know, make a push towards Wuj, even though from a military standpoint, I'm looking at it, it's not a good idea. Like I said, so I'll try to make a token effort. And we're going from there. I'm going to focus on my priorities. My priori priorities, I've said before, is Memel. And my priorities here is to secure certain... I want to secure my flanks, start trying to curl them in. Uh, if I can... It's going to take them... Like, they would have to trickle people in. I can deal with that. And then I can start, you know, get, going towards Lemberg and so on and so forth. I've got the internal lines of communication much more than the Germans do over here. And I've, you know, I, I understand they've got it there. But on the flip side, I'm pretty darn okay there as well. So you can see maybe, I'm not sure because I don't know what um, the camera angle is up there. I've got, I finished, like I said, I'm prioritizing I'm shifting people, it's still pretty fluid. It, when I look at the Russians, it's like an obscene amount of troops compared to what other people have to deal with. But they've got a lot to deal with here. And uh, their troop quality and the German superpowers with rail movement and so on and so forth, it's, you know, they gotta deal with lots of things. I've, oh, I've got so, so much to do with this narrative game. It's not funny, man. It's insane. Um, I did realize I've got to just do the way I, I'm not going to just be able to do everything that I want come January 1915. What do I want to do come January 1915? I want to have some of my pseudo rules in place, such as focus points, uh, using supply points to do reconnaissance, 
uh, because the proper air warfare hasn't started yet. But my God, I didn't realize how quick uh, they were already using uh, reconnaissance back in Tannenberg, man. I was like, what the hell? I, I was, well, they were doing it even before uh, the Great War, for goodness sakes. Like, go take a look at, um, um, well, myself is what I'm trying to say, not you people. Uh, uh, the Italo-Turkish War, you know, that type of stuff, which, you know, set off a lot of bruha. I just say, if the Ottomans had really squashed the Italians in the, uh, the Italo-Turkish War, I do not think we would be seeing the Great War happening, as far as I'm concerned. So you can blame. <laughs> oh my God, it's just like, I mean, of course, it's just like playing with a ball of thread, like throw a ball of thread, you know, with a, a bunch of kittens, you know, like, and that's been embedded or, you know, soaked in catnip for a year. Well, what do you expect is going to happen? <laughs> it's a chaos. All right, let's get back to this. So I've finished off my priorities, except the second army after. And you see these, um, what would you call it? Um, side effects, like the fourth army has to help out the second army here. The first army has to help out the, uh, the seventh army. You know what I mean? That type of stuff. I've already got, I've started to try to figure out, um, well, I did, uh, the eighth army over here, that's the third. Um, uh, the sixth is over here. They're, they're done. And I'm just going to have to suck it up, buttercup, with the, uh, the rest of the armies of what's left over. That's the way I'm looking at it. And then try to figure out what's coming down the pipe. Um, there's some stuff. It's like stuff I don't really want right now. I'm like, I just want people. But there's like a ton of artillery coming. I'm like, oh, you're, you are expensive to supply. God, I feel like a butcher from hell. Because I'm talking about, like I just said, uh, infantry are a lot cheaper to supply. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry, I'm just, I am doing it, but that's just the way it is. Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. Oh my God. Oh. I'm like the antithesis of uh, Patin, who uh, basically said, no, 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 no. You use machinery, we use shells uh, uh, to take the beating or you know do whatever, we put that focus on that, then we use the people, you don't use people. And I'm like, oh, I just look at simple math. Oh, my God. But then, you know, like, take a look at the Russians. They had a revolution super duper ultra quick. Um, uh, I know it wasn't just about this, but this obviously, like, was like, geez. No, actually, you know what? They were doing pretty good uh, in many ways, uh, from what I've been reading, anyways, pre-World uh, Great War, uh, such as medical advancements and whatnot. Um, they just needed to get that um, crazy man out of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, sorry, the czar and whatnot. Oh, it just could have been maybe a little bit more peaceful. It's the way the world worked, eh? Anyways, I'm listening to some amazing flipping music. I have to go take a look. It was a lot better than um, uh, the deep progressive techno I was listening to um, when I did the... Um, my offset squares uh, game. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I just need to like spend some like super long time staring at this game. This is where um, I got so much. It's just been so long. I've just been doing other things. Well, yeah, I have. But this. All right. So... Micro specificity will be this, like I've said before, and my version of what I call the Arabian conflict zone, which is uh, Mesopotamian uh, Palestine. Everybody else is going to be abstracted to some degree, and potentially I'm not even going to get to them to whatever. Oh my God, am I ever glad that Charles Satora mentioned... Um, Empire of the Sun or whatever. Because um, then I went and looked at it. I can get, well, I did. I bought it on print and play on uh, Wargame Vault for like not very much money Canadian wise. And I'm going to go and uh, talk to my local dude, uh, Custom Game Bits, 
we're going to make some super chunk well he will make some super chunky uh, counters for me and i'm happier in hell i'll print the the maps myself thank you very much no worries but I want to get into this diplomatic stuff, the ebb and flow. Yes, I, I love, like, trust me, man. My, my favorite bits, uh, for sure, is trying to figure out this ridiculous, um, I've, got, um, I've got the sheets over there, the freaking, um, look, look, look. It's all I'm doing, for God's sakes. I feel like I, have, I don't know what you call it, back and forth, dude. That's all of my reserve troops. It's insane. Okay, like the, the, the Russians are just like flush. But like I said, it goes away quick. 280 supply points and only one front. Engineering regiments can't use them until spring. So what's the point? Oh, gosh almighty. It's going to be uh, interesting. Because like I said, the Germans just sent over 20, 20, uh, Infantry divisions, Dervelkrieg-wise, uh, which is absurd uh, historically. That would, I don't think, would have happened. That's 10 core, for Christ's sakes, as far as I know. Um, yeah, it wouldn't have happened. My God, remember, they defended with what? Uh, the entire Eastern Front at the very beginning with what? Nine divisions or something insane. <laughs> Versus what? They had, um, uh, maybe, no, no, the French. The French had like 90, 90 going up against the Germans. I don't know what the, um, I can't remember what the number was for, for the Germans, but I'm pretty sure the French was like something like 90, was like at the beginning, you know, full of the, the whatevers. Oh, uh, yeah, so. And we're just going to have to, I'm just going to play it as it is. Um, who am I going to do next? I have to do the second army, these guys here. Because I have to make a token gesture for the, uh, for Wooj, which I will. Um, you know, we can probably get a hex or two, like I said before. And uh, the satellite armies, such as the fourth, uh, have to make some breathing room. Uh, we want to get rid of everybody um, over the Atzenka, that's for flipping sure. Like, F off, man. Um, or is that the Nida? That's the Nida. Is it? I keep doing this to myself. Let's kill. Ah. Uh, let's. So, satellite. Satellite. And we just, um, I've got lots of cavalry. I have to figure out where to pop them. Keep my artillery in position to strike, but not in a position where they're um, threatened because they can't retreat. So I have to make sure of that. Oh, darn it. I can't remember the person's per, uh, complete... Um, Handle name on YouTube, but Eric uh, was mentioning, uh, hey, do you do live um, playthroughs? Rarely, but um, like I mentioned to him um, and others, hey man, I've got free time, so let me figure out something spontaneous. I just don't, like for sure, with live stream type stuff, uh, don't step on other um, live stream gamers' toes. You know what I mean? Even, I know I'm uber duper um tiny but still you don't want to like piss other people off man so let's just take a look that's why uh the closest we have is um dan pen called these uh no enemies here saturday at midnight um yeah or oh one i don't know what it's called but um you know it's that's more or less as far as i'm concerned like a war gamer tv guide you know, it's nice. All right, so what am I gonna do now? God, what? Uh, gotta go and book my flipping spot at work for two weeks from now. 
In two hours, it's just insane. Uh, pandemic hoteling. Insane in the membrane. All right. Okay.